What's up everyone? Alex Corey here with CultivatedChange.com. I needed to make this video quickly. I just got done with a run around the park, but I was listening to a fantastic podcast with Sean Stevenson and Dr. Stephen Gundry about the microbiome. I can't think of a better time to be in a health and fitness journey just because the wealth of information coming out and more of it than I remember when I was growing up starting to get into my health journey is overwhelmingly empowering and positive. We're gonna go over just a quick couple quick things about useful information on your health journey. Okay, I'm sorry about the setting. I just carry my camera with me wherever I go at this point and <clears throat> It might start raining here any minute, but we'll go over this very quickly. Basically, the microbiome, which is the colony of bacteria, viruses, archaea, protozoa, parasites, worms, every other living organism in your gut, and by gut I mean uh, small intestine and large intestine mostly, is now being a little better understood as to how it affects you. So the, how I would think about myself as my own organism is constantly being redefined. So the line between your own cells and another organism's cells are being blurred to a great degree, which is kind of cool. The empowering part about this is, used to be a fairly deterministic model that everyone worked under when the Human Genome Project first started. As in, they started mapping all the genes and finding which genes controlled what, which ones set you up to be more likely to have this disease or controlled obesity, things like that. What we're learning more and more is that not only is epigenetics a thing, not only do we have a lot of control over which genes get expressed and which ones get turned off by lifestyle factors, but what was in this podcast, I guess this, I'll have to go find this study, uh, massive NIH study that Stephen Doctor or uh, Dr. Stephen Gundry mentioned. So the fascinating thing is that our genes really have very little to do with what's going to happen to us. Huge NIH study recently published that you're aware of showed that of everything that's going to happen to us in longevity, in diseases, our genes have only about 8% effect on what's going to happen to you and me. So that means 92% of the genes that are going to have an effect on you aren't yours or mine. They're actually our microbiome. Which basically says that from all of that microbiome, information, 8% of the genetic material is ours. So we have so many living organisms in us. Just bacteria, I think it was 40 trillion. And they don't have as much genetic material as we do because they're smaller organisms, but there's so many more of them that it makes that much more of a difference. 8% of the genetic material is ours, which can be disheartening because you think that um, you're not in control of your own body. That means 92% isn't ours. But the cool thing is, you're not stuck with something that's not yours. So those viruses, those archaea, those protozoa, mostly those uh, bacteria, and that is the probiotics. So I'm sure you've seen that in health food stores and just everywhere at this point, probiotics. So probiotic just means another living organism. They're always referred to as bacteria. So these are beneficial, non-pathogenic bacteria that people knew they existed maybe 15 years ago, but I don't think even um, people who were researching them fully understood the breadth to how many thousands and tens of thousands of strains we have those guys can be replaced so by the foods we eat so that is yogurt that's kefir that's kombucha that's sauerkraut that's uh, kimchi anything that is fermented is going to have good bacteria good is a weird word here just because there are some that serve you and some that don't bacteria aren't good or bad necessarily it depends on where they are like e coli is a fine bacteria if it stays in your large intestine but if you eat it and it ends up in your stomach you're gonna have food poisoning 
and probably some people can deal with it Wim Hof can deal with it but things like that so ancestrally we've had a plethora of uh, different strains of bacteria and that is mentioned in this podcast that I that I've been talking about basically as uh, your rainforest so your your microbiome is your ecology and you want as diverse of an ecology as possible to be as resilient as possible. Think of a, a real rainforest and you want as many species in there as possible because they're each contributing their own thing and if you lose one, having more tends to be a buffer against everything else. If you can hear the noise, I apologize. They're doing, cons actually there might be a train. <laughs> Sorry about that. Before I start rambling, point being, if you are start, if you're on your health journey, and you just started, or you've been going, I encourage you to pay attention to someone, it could be me, could be, pay attention to five people, each with their different specialties. Pay attention to someone who does metabolism, pay attention to people who do microbiome, pay attention to um, immunologists, different fields of specialty. They all probably be interested in other things, like all the channels I listen to, dip into everything, because it's all coming out so much and so fascinating. If you are just paying attention to a government source, if you're just listening to CDC, if you're just listening to NIH, if you are only relying on a couple of people, they're usually five years behind. Any textbook you buy takes about five years to assimilate all of the relevant studies. Much better to just have your ear to the ground, paying attention to people who are going through the studies every day, and they will present the meaningful ones to you about whatever your field of interest. But to wrap this up, the thing that catches my mind when people don't really care about the microbiome is that the studies they've done, and I think they've done some human studies, but they're doing fecal transplants, which basically means they're moving uh, bacteria that has colonized a healthy person, so a lean person with a uh, normal or um, better than average fasting uh, blood glucose or stable insulin or uh, normal triglyceride, healthy metabolic markers. They move, they do a fecal transplant, move the bacteria from that person to uh, an obese person or an overweight, metabolically unhealthy. So they give them a different microbiome. Do fecal transplants mm -hmm. of uh, fat bacteria into skinny mice, and there's one example of a skinny woman that I talk about in The Plant Paradox who got a fecal transplant from a cousin who was overweight, and she was a skinny marathoner. And this woman gained 30 pounds without changing her diet because now all of a sudden she had bacteria that were capable of extracting more calories and putting it into her. Which is, people don't lose that in a year on a normal calorie restricted diet. So that's fairly impressive. And that just goes to show that the food you put in your mouth has direct control over your metabolism. And we're not talking about calories. Calories are getting to be more and more of an outdated architecture of looking at energy. And now some really groundbreaking research has shown that depending on the bacteria you have in your small intestine, bacteria are capable of extracting more calories from the food you eat and putting it into you if they're bad bugs. If they don't exist, those calories don't go into you. There is so much more going on with the transfer of energy at that organism level that we can't measure. So we have no idea about absorption of calories. This is also the problem with the um, calorie in, calorie out model. Yeah, everyone gets that, you know, it's whatever you put in your mouth, but you can't really calculate calorie out. And people can be on the same exact diet and have completely different results, even in meta metabolic wards. So they do work, but it's way more beneficial to health in general, opposed to just weight to have a robust microbiome that is running an efficient metabolism and communicating with your cells than to rely on sheer willpower and almost making yourself hungry to lose weight. Hey everyone, I have an offer for you. Do you have a healthy habit that you've been meaning to implement in your life, but you either haven't had the resources, you don't know where to start, don't have enough information, or you just haven't actually figured out where to implement it in your actual week? That's what I do, and as a 
gift for following me and a preparation for sitting for my board exams next year for the National Council on Health and Wellness Coaches. I need a ton of practice, so I'm extending a free 30 minute, 20 to 30 minute coaching session for any one of you. Uh, the link will be down below. I need a little context about what exact habit you'd like to implement. Uh, I'll have a link to my calendar right below that. Just submit that and I will reach out. This can be anything from nutrition, cutting the crap out of your diet, implementing or resuming a fitness routine, uh, sleep and recovery, getting outside more, getting a little more movement in, uh, building more social connection, anything that touches around the content that that's been on my channel thus forth. And as a thank you, I will be having a substantial discount on any of the longer term health coaching programs I offer. See the link below. So worry about the calories less, worry about the types of foods that supply probiotics, which are the actual bacteria and prebiotics, which are the um, undigestible fibers that feed those bacteria. We'll go into a ton more videos about that. I just wanted to share my excitement because listening to a podcast and hearing something like that basically just sets me on fire. Metabolism, uh, gut health, immune health, any of that, just human resilience sets me on fire if you can't tell. So I encourage you to pay attention to any of those people that go over that type of material if it's interesting to you. And we will uh, do future videos on microbiome and immune health.